He lied. Y'all need to worship him. Lied. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the hate crime attack against the openly gay and black actor from the hit TV show Empire by the name of Jesse Smollett. Now, this has been everywhere, all over the Internet, all over television for about two weeks now and a little bit of change. And I wanted to do a video about it from the very beginning, but I did not have enough information. So I was like, let me pause for a minute. Let me just relax. But from the start, from the initial reporting of the story, I knew in my heart that it was fake. And I'll explain to you why. But first, let me just back up a little bit to explain what's going on here. And then again, it's all the details. I'm going to hold you too long. Give me about a good 10 minutes. That should be enough to wrap it on up. Nice bow on top. Start from this top. Jesse Smollett, like I said, is a openly gay black actor on the hit TV show Empire. Empire Films in Chicago, and that's where he lives. One day, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning, and he decides, I'm hungry, and I'm going to go to Subway, get a sandwich, allegedly, according to him. Now, he's in the Subway. That's been proven. But after he leaves the Subway, he says that he is attacked by two men that scream homophobic and racial slurs at him, talking about that's that F gay word, Empire N word. They beat him down. They try to lynch him, put a rope around his neck, and they pour bleach on his face. Now, that was the original story. So, of course, the media was like, you know, racist white Trump supporters commit hate crime against popular black gay actor. That was the story from the beginning. But I knew that didn't make any sense. First of all, why would any racist white, quote unquote, Trump supporter attack an actor from the TV show Empire because he's black and gay? And why would they even recognize him? Why would they watch Empire? You know, like for what reason would a racist white Trump supporter watch Empire? It's a black show. It doesn't make any sense. Now, you do have some white Trump supporters that watch Empire, but that don't mean they're racist. And some of them married to black people. I know that's kind of hard to believe for those that are on the left, but I digress for right now. The story didn't make any sense from the beginning. He said that they screamed, this is MAGA country N-word as they left. I'm like, MAGA country? First of all, you're in Chicago, in a nice part of Chicago as well. Why would anybody say this is MAGA country? It doesn't make any sense. Nobody says that, number one. And number two, you're in Chicago. That's most certainly not MAGA country. So I knew from the jump that the story was fake. But let's continue. So that was reported by TMZ. But the Chicago police came out and said, wait a minute. We didn't hear anything about no MAGA country or stuff like that when we spoke to him the first time. So that's not been confirmed. You can't come out there and say that. But magically, when the Chicago police do a follow up interview with Jesse the next day, all of a sudden he says now that, yes, they did scream MAGA country. So you changing your story already. You starting to mess up. That's like when you got two guys that are colluding with each other to tell one of the guy's girlfriends where he was at the night before. And one of the guys gets the story wrong. That's what's happening here, in my humble opinion. But for now, I digress. Days pass, weeks pass, people are saying, you know, this is an example of white supremacy. This is an example of racism and hatred from the racist white conservatives against a gay black male. It's all kind of memes floating around. People are saying that the MAGA hat is a new white hood. All kind of crazy stuff. There was a meme of me and a lot of my people that I met at YBLS with the MAGA hats on. You had Alyssa Milano talking about the MAGA hat is a new white hood you know, debunking that whole thing, but that's a different story. So it's a lot of stuff happening at once during the situation revolving this because the narrative was painted that it was so-called racist white Trump supporters. But the story begins to unravel. First of all, there's cameras everywhere in downtown Chicago, everywhere, 30,000 of them, but no cameras caught this particular incident. The camera did catch Jesse in the subway by himself, but nobody else was around. Okay. And then the whole story about he got beat up while he was on the phone with his manager and he had a sandwich in his hand. He was able to not only 
keep his phone, but the sandwich as well. And he ate the sandwich, apparently. Because when the police got there, apparently they found the Subway wrapper, the sandwich that had been eaten. And he still had his phone because he was able to get the phone to the police. But we get to that a little bit later. And he had a rope around his neck still. And the quote unquote rope here was not really a rope. It was a thin piece of clothesline. Okay. Now, <laughs> I'm going to just jump straight into how the police have now captured people of interest and are now questioning them and how they raided their home. People talk about, you know, I'm getting snitched on and I got rats out here. They're trying to throw me in the penitentiary, please. The police have so much technology at their fingertips that we use every day. You take for granted. They use that to their advantage. First of all, they tracked that piece of clothesline down to an Ace Hardware and saw some guys on camera that could be the guys that are being questioned right now in the police station. Okay, from the piece of clothesline around your neck, they were able to track that to Ace Hardware in Chicago. There's a picture of some quote unquote persons of interest, and I placed that on the screen before you. It looks very grainy. They were identified allegedly as homeless guys, but two more guys were picked up because of probably the clothesline that was tracked to the Ace Hardware and the camera that was inside, also because of Jesse's own phone records. Once he mentioned the whole thing about the phone, being on the phone with the manager the whole time, that's when the police was like, okay, we got a piece of evidence right here. Let's get no phone records. Hand over the phone. He didn't want to do it at first. And he had a nerve to go on Robin Roberts' show, whatever that show is on the network that she is the host of, and straight lie to her face about that. They wanted me to give my phone to the tech for three to four hours. I'm sorry, but... I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I have private pictures and videos and numbers, my partner's number, my family's number, my castmate's number, my friend's numbers, my private emails, my private songs, my private voice memos. I don't know what that's going to be to hand over my phone for. And honestly, by then, inaccurate false statements had already been put out there i mean he was explaining what was going on then he just stopped explaining it so apparently he was not able to conjure up a good enough lie at that particular moment which kind of points to him not really being a smart guy because you would think you would have a good story concocted before you go speak to her because that's going to be a question you get asked not only by her but by the police and the media where is your actual answer for that it's because you're most likely lying, sir. But to get back to it, the Ace Hardware probably got the guys right there. Also, the phone records. According to what I've been reading in the local Chicago media, the police have already subpoenaed Jesse's phone records from the provider. So they got all the numbers, everything listed. What Jesse did, I think, rather than giving over the phone, was to download his phone records onto a spreadsheet and then go delete certain numbers. So he did their job for them. All they got to do now is just compare what he gave them to what they have and follow up on the deleted numbers. That's led them to two Nigerian guys that are residents of Chicago, Ola and Abel Osundaro, who were actually extras on Empire, who Jesse follows on Instagram. These guys apparently left for Nigeria on the day of the attack. Okay, so you're talking about the attack allegedly happened at 2 o'clock in the morning. They were out that same day later on, probably like 11 o'clock. They bounced in Nigeria, and they just now came back recently. And apparently, these two guys also rode a lift to Jesse's particular place. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. The technology at the fingertips, the, the Instagram, you know, the social media, they got that. They got your phone records. They got the cameras. They got everything is right there. You're making it easy. Apparently, these guys are being questioned and detained right now by Chicago police, and they may be charged as early as today, which is Friday, February 15th, 2019, by 5.30 p.m. Central Time. So we may see pretty soon here who these guys really are. Now, you're talking about two Nigerian guys. Look at me. Look at my face right now. I look like a lot of Nigerians in my face. Now, do I appear to be a white racist Trump supporter? 
I'm a Trump supporter, yes, but uh, am I white? Would you look can, can anybody say that I look white? Now these guys are straight Nigerians, so you think anybody gonna say they look white? And they're big too. They they're like, you know, bodybuilding type dudes. So let me get this straight, Jesse. You decided to do this hoax of a hate crime with guys you know that live in Chicago, that's been on Empire, who you follow on Instagram. We got your t-shirt, you done left fingerprints and all. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. What kind of guy would do something like this? Now, the reason that he did this, according to what I've been reading, is because he may have been written off of the show Empire coming up pretty soon. Now, of course, he denies that. His representatives deny that. Fox, the company that has the show, they denied that as well. They said it's ridiculous. He's a, a very important part of the show. But that could have been the case. Maybe it was a case and it's not the case anymore because he's made himself be so high profile and popular that he was able to keep his position on the show. But that's pretty much what that is. I mean, this whole thing was bogus. He said he got beat up and he had a fractured rib. Then that became a bruised rib. But the very next day after the so-called attack, he was in Los Angeles gyrating like Elvis on stage. I mean, come on, man. If you have a bruised rib, let alone a cracked rib, you're going to be unable to really move like that. It's like having a bad back. You're not going to be able to go up there and do the Macarena, cha-cha slide, all this and that. You're going to be kind of gingerly for a little bit until you heal up and get back right. So I'll leave that right there. This is really silly. A phony hoax yet again, just like the Covington boys and many other hoaxes. Probably the thing in El Paso, another hoax. How many more times must we see outright proven violence from the left and hoaxes from the left that try to blame the right before we realize who the true violent people are, who the real deranged people are? This is part of the reason why I left the left. Too many lies, too many deceptions. Now, we're going to see the full story coming up soon. I did not want to do a video from the very beginning. I wanted to wait, get some more information. And I think I have enough information to prove my case of this whole story really being bogus. The reasoning and the details behind it we'll know pretty soon, but that's all I got for right now. So what do you think? Do you think that Jesse Smiley engaged in a hoax here? If you think that way, please explain to me why. Why did he do that? I think it was because he wanted to get some fame, some attention, some notoriety, and he might just be kind of dumb in general. Do you think that the attack is real? If you think that way, please explain to me why. If he was attacked by some quote-unquote white racist Trump supporters, then why did he recognize him? Dude, like what kind of white racist Trump supporter watches a black show like Empire? Okay. What kind of person that would beat somebody down would not take their phone and also not take their sandwich? And then on top of that, it's the polar vortex at that particular point in time. It's 20 degrees below zero outside in Chicago. And the guys were apparently tracked by their lift. <laughs> They're tracked by their lift. Like, I mean, there's so much evidence here, but we're going to see it all play out. That's all I got for right now, but whatever your comments are. Please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.